Praise the Lord. It's wonderful to come to you again with the word of God. The word of God is life. It's it's life itself. <laughs> so we thank God for the opportunity. Let us pray as we get uh, started sharing. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people. But we thank you also that they have the opportunity to sit under the counsel of your word. May you open every heart to hear your voice. And may you open our voices so that you may speak to your people. Enable us to bring forth your word with power and with clarity to the glory glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So thank you for joining us and for tuning into the word of God. Today we are going to share on a topic when God's story becomes your story. When God's story becomes your story. God has been uh, speaking to us in the last few days that as we wind up and come to the close of the year 2020, He wants us to launch out into the deep. Because he wants to do mighty miracles in our lives. And I believe this is part and parcel of what God wants to do. In a way, this is also a message to say the same thing. It's just to say that God wants to make his story your story. Or he wants to make you part of his story. Because when you become a part of his story, miracles are normal. <laughs> Great things happen. God accomplishes mighty things through you and through your life. As long as you can become a part of his story. Years ago, I was reading a book by a man called Max Lucado. He's a minister of the gospel. And he actually, I think the title of his book is similar to the title of today's message. And he was just talking about how God touched the lives of ordinary people and made their story his story. Truthfully, the Bible is actually a book of stories. <laughs> it is a book of stories. Of stories of people who have aligned themselves with God's story. <laughs> that is what the Bible is. And the thing is this. Some people think that the Bible closed when it reached Revelation. But in a way, I mean, that is what God wanted to seal up at that point. But really, in a way, we are continuing to live in the experience of God's presence, God's word, God's story. And and his story. <laughs> so his story is still continuing. But he's looking for the people who are going to be part of that story. You see, Jesus taught us to pray. And he said, pray. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when they say as it is in heaven, not necessarily as it is being done. Not necessarily as it is being done in heaven, but as it is in heaven. 
Mugulo. Exactly. Because some things may be done on earth differently than they are done in heaven. But what, what Jesus was actually trying to say is that the will of God is already established in heaven. It is there. It is like he has a book where his will is written. And what we need to pray is that that will which is in heaven, which is in the book books of God in heaven is done here on earth. In other words, let's let God's story let it be brought here so that we can live out that story. So when God's story becomes your story, that is what we are talking about. Now, I want us to turn to a scripture in the book of Psalms. Psalm 105. Actually, we could almost read the whole chapter. Because it's really the story of how God worked in the lives of, uh, of Abraham, Isaac, the people of Israel. In other words, God wrote a story of their lives and what he had done in their lives because those people became a part of his story. That is what happened. Now, let's look from verse 1. It just says, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done. His miracles and the judgments he pronounced. All descendants of Abraham, his servant. I am a descendant of Abraham. I hope you are also a descendant of Abraham. All those who are born of God are descendants of Abraham. He says, all descend- he says, all descendants of Abraham, his servant, all, all sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham. The oath he saw to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed and strangers in it. They wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. I hope you are following. I hope you are, I hope you are following the story. He allowed no one to oppress them for their sake he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. He called down famine on the land and destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. So we are seeing the story of God unfolding through these men's lives. Talks about a covenant he made with Abraham. And how he confirmed it to Isaac. And he confirmed it with Jacob. And then there were very few at the time. But, but God 
God had certain intentions for them. Na yate mo kama ina chigeni re change wa Even 400 years later. Ne miaka bina ijadda ko. He still had plans. Era ya ina teka teka. He had his story written out. Ya ina olugero renga rawa. And it says that they wandered from nation to nation. Na gama tibatambula mawanga. As they went from kingdom to kingdom. Ya vamwa kabaka ngabadde mbulala. He told the kings don't touch my anointing. Na gama kabaka temoku ata kubalonde bangi. He said you don't touch my my people who are selected by me. Na bagamba temoku ata kubantu wa imafaka mafuta. He even allowed famine to come. Na kiriza ne njalo kujja. But then he sent Joseph to preserve them. Na yati na atuma Yusuf ko. Basically he had a story. Ya yina olugero that they became a part of. Tiba dubafu ke kitundo ku ro. And then it goes on to talk about Joseph verse 18. Era ne re yongere ko kira ku Yusuf mu re 19. That Joseph's feet were bruised with shackles. Ebigrebye Ebigrebye babirumya enjegere. His neck was put in irons. Yalaki yagala miranga asibidwa ne byuma. So the story is not all smooth sailing. Olugero oh, rote rutambula bulunji. Sometimes it has some shackles. Luina wo luina wo e. Joseph had to go through some shackles. Yusuf yali ayino kuita mukulumi. But he was still part of the story. Oh, Nyati yali yali achali kitundu ku rugero oro. Then he says the king sent and released him. Nagama tikabaka yatuma ne bamusumulura. No, let's read verse 19. Till what he foretold came to pass. Till the word of the Lord proved him true. So in other words, he was in shackles until the word of the Lord proved him true. Verse 20. The king sent and released him. The ruler of people set him free. He made him master of his household. Ruler over all he possessed. To instruct his princes as he pleased. And to teach his elders wisdom. So in other words, God had had already planned out all these things. Because in the book of Psalms 33, it says that, that he works all things according to the counsel of his will. So he had his story written out. And he picked his men to become a part of that, that cast. cast. People act. That, so he picked Abraham. Na Ibrahim. He picked Isaac and Jacob. Na Isaac and Jacob. Picked Joseph. Na Yusuf. He even picked Pharaoh. Na Luna ni Pharaoh. So that he would come and release Joseph. A joke smula Yusuf. Uh, and give him a chance to rule over the people. Am um, wom okisogo kufuga abantu. He allowed the people to be in, in Egypt for 400 years. Na kiriza abantu kwela Misri miaka bina. You can read the rest of the story. Oso kusmo lugero ro sikati. But I'm just trying to show you. Nengeza ko kulaga. That God had a story. Timo kama yaina olugero. And his will is written in heaven. Now the Bible teaches us Bible to pray that the will of God be done on earth. In other words, that we may be part of his cast. That we may be part of his story. That is what God wants to do. In the Bible, it says that The heaven of the heavens belongs to God. But the earth, he has given it to man. So in other words, God cannot bring his story. He can't do his story on earth without our involvement. He needs us to be there. To be part of that story. That is why Jesus said to us, Pray that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are currently standing at the cross of a new year. We've just begun a new year. 2021. And of course, sometimes after the experiences of 2020, one can feel lethargic to pray. <laughs> feel like maybe Does it make sense for me to pray? Because some people prayed at the beginning of 2020. And then COVID came. And all these problems began. And we've gone through a lot of challenges. So we can begin to feel like maybe it doesn't make sense for me to pray. Because anyway, things will happen. Something will happen. And we don't know what it will be. But I've come to encourage you to say, by the way, 
What happens on earth is sometimes the influence of the devil. Sometimes it's the influence of man. Because we make decisions that put us into trouble and into danger. Just like Adam did. He was given the garden. Everything was perfect. It was aligning with God's story. Actually, God's story was that man would live a, an, a wonderful life in the Garden of Eden. A life of continuous communion with God where, where there would be no evil. But man's decision, they put the world where it is. So we sometimes make decisions which create problems. But the good thing is this. We can also make decisions which are led by the Holy Spirit. We can make decisions which can bring about God's story on the earth. And one of the first decisions we need to make is, is to align with what Jesus taught us. To pray that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because God's will is good. The Bible, in fact, says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of Light. With whom there is no shadow of turning. Meaning he can't change. Meaning his all goodness. And goodness, his goodness can never change. So, in other words, what's in his story is all for our good. is all going to bring good. But we must be able to align with the Lord. So how are we going to do that? Number one, we are going to pray and seek His grace. That is why as we start this year, as we begin this new year, it is important that we spend time praying and seeking his face. Let us go to John chapter 5 verse 18. Verse 18. And we are going to read up to verse 20. It says, for this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father. Making himself equal with God. In other words, he was living out God's story. <laughs> Jesus' story was God's story. So him and the father were the same. <laughs> they were one. <laughs> so anyway, the Jews didn't like it. <laughs> and they wanted to kill him. Some people will want to kill you. <laughs> they want to kill you because you are living. Because you are living, <laughs> living God's story. By the way, it is so true. Jesus said that if they persecuted him, they will also persecute you. So it is true that when we decide to align ourselves with God's story, some people will not like us. But let's go to the core of what I want us to understand here. Verse 19. Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, to your amazement, you will, he will show him even greater things than this. So, so in, in other words, Jesus was saying, if you want to understand why my story is like my father's story, <laughs> this is the reason. The son cannot do anything unless he sees the father doing it. When he sees what the father is doing, that is what he does. 
And that is why Jesus spent many mornings, many days. It, it, was, it was actually a habit. He went to the Father. Sometimes at the end of a day, he would go to the Father. What was he going there to do? He was going there to see what the Father is doing. What does that mean, see what the Father is doing? It means the father had a blueprint of what was supposed to happen. In other words, like tomorrow, the father wanted to heal the man at the pool of Bethsaida. But Jesus wouldn't be able to know it unless he went to the father. Only when he would go to the father, then he would receive revelation. He would get a revelation of what the father wanted to do. And in those times of conversation, the will of God, which is in heaven, was revealed to the Son. And then the Son would now come down from the mountain the next day and he would go to the pool of Bethsaida. And, and then he would heal the man at the pool. Then at the end of that day, he would go back to the mountain. And then he would see what the Father is doing. <laughs> This is the thing that God wants to do with us. If you are going to have your story become like God's story, if you are going to live God's story, when God's story becomes your story, it will only be by by revelation. <laughs> it will be by going to the Father and seeking His face. So these people were annoyed with Jesus <laughs> for living exactly like his father. Because the good thing is he wasn't just saying he was like his father. No, he didn't just say. Even what he did confirmed that he was like his father. Many of us live as if we are not <laughs> children of our Father. We live a life devoid of the power of God. We live a life empty. Not full of what God intends for us to live. But this is one of the major reasons. Many of us haven't learned what Jesus used to do. Jesus says, the Son can do one can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father do. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. And I love what he says in verse 20. He says, for the father loves the son. I want to say to you, the father loves you. The father wants your story to be just like his story. But the only limitation is if you don't go to, be, to see what the father is doing. Then you will not be able to experience it. There is no way you will. But Jesus adds something. He says to your amazement <laughs> he will show him even greater things. <laughs> Meaning the father will even show the son greater things. I want to ask you a question. Is your life one of greater things? Is your life one of greater things? If it is not, then maybe decide that you are going to go and seek the Father. Decide that 2021 will be greater than 2020. Decide that 2022 will even be greater than 2020. Why do I say this? Things? Jeremiah 33, verse 3. It's a scripture we used to call the telephone line to heaven. It says, call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things that you know nothing about. That's exactly what Jesus said. He said, because the son always goes to see what the father has to say. 
he's able to experience it and in fact he told them in fact you watch out <laughs> because he's even going to show him greater things your tomorrow can be greater than your today this year 2021 can be greater than last year 2020 the only secret is this. Pray and seek his face. Pray and seek his face. Number two. Surrender to God. Surrender to God. In S2. When I was in my S2. Uh, the Lord led me through certain experiences. One of them was. I faced a lot of. Uh, challenges at school and rejection. But during that time, the Lord drew me to himself and started speaking to me through the scriptures. And as I read and read, my relationship with the Lord began to grow. But I remember a particular day, the day when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. The day, uh, that day, it marked a total transformation of my life. But I remember the song I was singing. Because we went to prepare for a worship, uh, just to do practice for worship. Uh, we were just a few small boys. <laughs> Very short. <laughs> Very small. <laughs> yeah, but we, we had a desire for God. So we went for this choir practice. And we were, we were just about three of us. <laughs> So we began to do the practice. Then after doing the practice, we said, let us pray. Let's each take a moment to pray. So as we were praying, I began to sing the song, I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my Blessed Savior, I surrender all. And as I sang that song, something, something in my spirit gave way to God. You know, many of us, we come to church, we listen to messages, we even attend prayer meetings, but our heart has not reached the place of breaking before God, of surrendering to God, of just Pouring your life there. Uh, and saying, I just want to be yours. But that day, that moment reached for me. And my heart just broke open before God. And let me tell you when that happened, the Spirit of God came into my life and filled my life. And I can say for sure anything of God which is in me, it really began in that moment. In that moment of surrender. We need to surrender to God. If we are going to have our story become the story of God, meaning God's story becoming our story. Maybe that's what I want to say. If we want God's story to be our story, we have to reach a place of surrender. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Chapter 32. Verse 22. Verse 22. It may be a story that you have read before. But you may also not have read it before. It is a story. <laughs> It is a story. Lugero. When God's story becomes your story. Lugero. Verse 22. Lugero. That night, 
echirecho Jacob got up and took his two wives. Yakobo na agulukoka na atola bakazi bebo mbi. His two maid servants and his 11 sons. Na abazana bebo mbi. Na abana abana be 11. And crossed the ford of the Jabok. Na asumekira musumo kugwa ye yaboki. After he had sent them across the stream. Na batwana abasumoso mugga. He sent over all his possessions. Na asumo sabyo nabi yalina. So Jacob was left alone. Yakobo na asigalayo yika and the man wrestled with him um, till daybreak mm, when the man saw that he could not overpower him he touched the socket of jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man then the man said let me go for it is daybreak but jacob replied i will not let you go unless you bless me the man asked him what is your name jacob answered then the man said your name will no longer be jacob but israel because you have struggled with god and men and have overcome jacob said please tell me your name but he replied why do you ask by name then he blessed him there Jacob Yakobo had been living yaringa aberawo for many years emyaka minji notice notice that at this point ozula anti mchitumu chifochino Jacob is married Yakobo mufumbo in fact he has two wives aina bachara babiri he has 11 sons aina nabana 10 He has lived so many years at his uncle's place abadewe emyaka minji e yumakaga kujawe but the issue about Jacob was this na yesu aku Yakobo yali eno His name Jacob. Erinyele Yakobo means supplanter. Diategeza oyo omubi, omulimba, omulimba, a trickster. Oyo munafusi, a person who cheats and lies to get his way. Oyo mtu alimba afune kubolie. And that is exactly how Jacob had lived. Era watu Yakobo yali abirawo. He had lived a life. Yali abadde obula where he played tricks. Bo yazanya obukodyo played tricks. Yazanya obukodyo. And he got away with it. Nafune kubombo. He played a trick With his, on his older brother and took his birthright natwala <laughs> found him when he was very hungry so let me give you soup but the condition is this you allow me to become the first born very good negotiator he got it when the time of blessing came he connived with his mom they tricked the dad he was blessed before his brother who was actually the one supposed to receive the blessing he was a trickster when he went to laban's house i think he found a trickster who was better than him because <laughs> laban told him you work for seven years and when you are done i will give you Uh, you, the one the girl you want my daughter whom you want he worked for seven years <laughs> on the day of the wedding they gave him another one <laughs> not the one he wanted <laughs> they tricked him <laughs> the second time <laughs> you worked for the next seven years <laughs> he got the one he wanted <laughs> but after that <laughs> when the gods would produce <laughs> the uncle would take the ones which he had said were his <laughs> When he, so he actually basically ran away from his uncle's place naduka okuveye wako jawe because he had reached a place kubanga yatoka mchi where he had found a trickster who was better than him where zulira omuzanyi wo i don't know whether, whether this trickery was genetic simanyi obo bujoko liwe bwalinga bwaza kwa it might have been genetic because this was the brother of his mom kubanga ono yali mwanyina wa mama we so i don't know whether it was a genetic chikare simanyi oba bwali bujoko libwa musai but you see God had pressed hard on him. And he was trying to get this man to surrender. He had a story. God had the story of Israel. He wanted Jacob to be part of that story. But Jacob was running. And Jacob was 
seeking people. And Jacob had not reached a place of surrender. Until this night, when God said now, I have come to a place where I need to meet this man one on one. one, on one. Actually, he had Jacob send all his goods. Sent his wives. Sent his children. Then when he was alone. For some of you, God is looking for a wrestling match with you. Because you have not surrendered. And I tell you the truth. You will not be able to leave God's story. Unless you can surrender. Jacob was still hard. Even when the man came to wrestle with him. He wrestled with him. <laughs> Till daybreak. Some of us, God wants to write our story. In a totally different way. A glorious way. But the problem is we are still wrestling against God. We are wrestling with him. He touches our finances. So that we can break. We are still stubborn. He touches our bodies. We are still stubborn. He had to touch Jacob's hip and get it out of joint for this man to reach a breaking point. You don't have to wait till you reach a breaking point. I want to ask you, surrender to the Lord. Surrender to the Lord. Because when Jacob surrendered, listen to what God did with him. He asked him, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. My name is Cheat. My name is Supplanter. My name is Trickster. And God said, from now on, your name will no longer be Jacob. You'll be called Israel. But it took Jacob's hip being wrenched. <laughs> For him to break. And fall. On this God. On this God. I pray that you will break. But you won't have to wait till your hip is out of joint. I pray that you will surrender. That if you are hearing me today. That you will surrender. Because your story can be God's story. God can work through your life. Today we know Israel. We know the nation of Israel. But it was born out of surrender. The story of Israel was the story of God. All along, God was up to something. He was trying to write his story. But there was a man <laughs> who was not surrendered. But the day that man surrendered, God's story became a reality. Here on earth. Some of you, God wants to write a story of a new nation. <laughs> Some of you, God wants to write using your life. He wants to write a story of a new heritage. Israel means prince with God. One who has come to a place of reigning with God. Some of you, God wants to put you there. Where you will reign and be a prince with him. But you have to surrender. <laughs> you have to let go. You have to give it up. Let me tell you something. True prayer changes men. True prayer changes men. I see some people who have been at the prayer mountain. But the man is still the same as he was. He's still lying. He's still cheating. He's still committing fornication. That man has not met God. No one can convince me that he has. It doesn't matter how many revelations he can come up with. A man who is not changed has has not met God. They have not met God. A man who meets God. Their life changes. Totally changes. 
he changes. Prayer was never intended to change God. Some of us think we are going to arm twist God. We go to pray thinking we are going to arm twist him. Now God you have to do this. Now God you know you must do this. We spend hours and hours and hours. If you will surrender, let me tell you something. You will even spend minutes and miracles will happen. And the power of God will be evident. You just need surrender. This is the only thing we need for God's story to become our story. Surrender. Jesus did not pray for 10, 10 hours at yes, the tomb of Lazarus. Never did. He just said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came. God wants to do these kind of things. Incredible miracles. But, all, but only with surrendered vessels. Let us surrender. Let us surrender. Number three. Obey God by faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 5. You see when a man is when a man is surrendered that man becomes obedient. <laughs> he becomes obedient. He becomes obedient to God. Romans Actually, I like the way it is said in Luganda. He is soft. That is a surrendered man. So, obey God by faith. Romans 1 verse 5. Through him and for his name's sake, through him and for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship. Yeah, to call people from among all Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. Yeah, the obedience of faith. Let me tell you something. It is impossible to obey God without faith. <laughs> if you don't have faith, it is impossible to obey God. And let me say another statement. Disobedience in the life of a believer is a sign that they don't believe. <laughs> I say disobedience in the sign of a, in the heart in the life of a believer is a sign that they don't believe. <laughs> So just think of an area where you've been disobedient to God. <laughs> By the way, even me, I have had those areas. But it just meant I didn't believe God. Because if I believed God, I would just obey. And I would get the results. So when you see disobedience in the life of a believer, it is evidence that that person is not believing God. They are not walking by faith. Genesis 22. You will read it in your time. Abraham. Abraham he obeyed God. He obeyed God to take his son. To the altar. You would have to have believed God. For you to do something like that. You take your son. Put him on an altar. And, an altar, and pick a knife. And say I'm killing him. That is why God said to him, said Abraham, Abraham, you have shown me your faith. You've shown me your faith. How? By your obedience. By your obedience. The obedience of faith will help you be part of God's story. The widow of Zarephath First Kings chapter 17. This is still talking about obedience. Verse 7 to verse 16. We may not go into all of the details. But Elijah shows up. And he's been given an instruction. Go to Zarephath. You're going to find this widow. And when you find her, she's going to take care of you until the rain comes again. 
and he goes and finds the widow. And when he talks to her, he says, I want some bread. I want something to eat. She said, look, I only have just a little flour and a little oil. Let's go there. So that we read those, just those particular verses. 2 Kings, no, 1 Kings chapter 17. Praise God. Praise God. The obedience of faith. I'm going to read verse 9. Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon. And stay there. I've commanded the widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, in other words, water is easy. <laughs> it was easy to go and get that one. Yeah, yeah. As she was going to get it, he called her and he said, You bring me, please bring me a piece of bread. Listen to this woman. As surely as the Lord your God lives. You've heard people say, I swear. <laughs> this is what the woman was saying. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I swear, <laughs> as surely as your God lives, I don't have any bread, only a handful of fly in a jar, and a little, and a little oil in a jar. Not futa. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home, make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small cake of bread for me. From what you have and bring it to me. And, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. Listen to verse 15. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So, there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. This woman wouldn't have obeyed if she had no faith. That's why I say when you see disobedience in the life of a believer, you know that it is, it's a problem of not believing. God says bring the tithes, the full tithes into the storehouse. And I will bless you. And I will pour out a blessing too much for you to contain. When you see a believer who is not bringing the tithe, you just know that person does not believe God. That is what it means. Any form of disobedience is really a lack of faith. But look at the story of this woman. The Bible says she went and did what Elijah said. And from that day, she was supplied. Not just her. She was supplied with her entire family and the man of God as well. Praise God. Praise God. I want us to obey God. Choose to obey Him by faith. By faith. God is going to speak to some people and tell you to do certain things. That from the natural standpoint, they don't tie up. But the way your story is going to be part of God's story is by the obedience of faith. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. I'm spending a little time on the obedience of faith. 
Hebrews chapter 5. Verse 7. During the days of Jesus' life on earth. Verse 7. Hebrews chapter 5. During the days of Jesus' life on earth. He, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was hard because of his reverent submission. The reason God had Jesus is because of his reverent submission. Because of his obedience. Listen to verse 8. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. He became the source of eternal salvation. For all who obey him. Obedience begets obedience. When he obeyed God. He became the source. Of eternal salvation. To those people who would also obey. There is a ripple blessing. There is a ripple blessing. In obedience. Even though it takes you through the road of suffering. There is a ripple effect of obedience. You will be blessed. But that obedience you've given to God. Will also be born. In the lives of those whom God has put under your influence. That is how Jesus. Has been able to bring salvation. Even though he went through a road of suffering. The Bible says through the things he suffered. He learned obedience. These days we have a lot of microwave Christians. People who just want the answer. But they don't want the suffering. They don't want the process. They don't want to go through calculating and the formula. They just want. X times X plus Y is equal to Z. They don't want They don't want the X plus Y. They just want the Z. That is all they want. Praise God. The key to increasing anointing, to increasing grace, to increasing power in our lives is obedience. Obedience by faith. Praise the Lord. This is how Jesus lived. And the Bible says of him in Philippians 2, verse 5, it says, let the same attitude be this attitude, let it be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That even though he was equal with God, he humbled himself. He went down. Some of you, God is going to have you go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. I remember a time when God gave me a leading to go and start doing my research work in uh, in Tororo. I, I had just graduated. I was here in the city. I was working in places here in the city. So things were okay. But I got a sense that the Lord wanted me to go and start doing research. When I applied for the work, I I got interviewed and I passed the interview. When I reached the place where I was supposed to work, they told me we are going to, that the place where we are going to work is in Tororo. I thought Tororo is okay. I have lived there as a child. I will live. It's probably Tororo town. When we reached Tororo town, 20 kilometers inside Nagongera, Inside. Munda. Then they showed me the place, the house. I had no bed. This is doctor. This is doctor. Yeah, you have graduated. You've been seated in, in chairs with tires in, in the clinics of Kampala. Yeah. Where, exactly. This is doctor. 
Oh, no, now here is my room. No bed. Put your mattress down. <laughs> that is where I was going to sleep. Then I said, how are we going to be going to the site? The pickup which had taken us. It was going back to Kampala. The next day. They told me they are, they are bringing motorcycles. You are going to learn how to ride. I said, okay. <laughs> I know how to ride a bicycle. I've never ridden a motorcycle. I had to learn. And then they, they said, now let's go to the clinic where you're going to be going. This is where you are going to be sleeping. Now where you're going to be working. Yeah, another six kilometers. You will be riding. My friend. He learned obedience. <laughs> through the things he suffered. <laughs> and those were, that was the time when the Bududa rains. The first Bududa rains which caused the landslide in 2010. That, that was when it started. And I had to ride through it. Every day. Go through the, go through the rain. Not even rain. <laughs> the, the water would reach all above our knees. On a motorcycle. motorcycle. Fall. Get up. Sometimes the bike fails. I remember tying ropes on the second bike. Through the mud. You see, when people see uh, the fruit of success, they think it just came. They don't understand. Jesus. Yes, Humbled himself. Went through all the things he went through. When I talk about my sufferings in Nagongera, <laughs> they, are but a jo- they are but a joke <laughs> compared to what Jesus went through. But the Bible says, when it was all done, God gave him a name that is above every name. That at his name, everything, things in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth, they must bow. They must respond. I've spoken to machines and they have responded. I've spoken to bodies and they have responded. To the name of Jesus. They just have to submit. Why? The fruit of obedience. He obeyed. He obeyed. He went through the suffering. He went so low that everything else cannot get any lower than him. And that is why everything else has to go under him when God exalts him. Praise God. I don't know if you're getting it. Praise the Lord. The obedience of faith. Let us learn obedience. Number four, which is our last one. Allow God to use your resources for his story. For his story. For his story. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 8. You can write it down. We may not go into it. But this was another woman in the days of the prophet Elisha. She saw this man of God. He used to come to minister. And he would come through their place. And she said, this man is a man of God. Why don't I Rachi? build a room. So she talked to her husband. Said, let us build a room for this man of God. And they built a room. A nice place. And they said to the man of God, man of God, you can sleep here. Any time you come this way, please feel free to sleep here. They got their resources and they decided to use those resources for God's purposes. The man of God came and stayed there. And then he asked, what should we do for this woman? And of course, God now had something he wanted to do. And the woman did not have a child. And the man of God said, by this time next year, you will have a child. And and she had waited for so long. To the point that when he said it, she just said, you man, don't deceive me. It is okay, you just leave me. It is fine, I gave you a place to stay. It's not that I want anything. You can leave it, it's okay. 
because she couldn't even imagine kubanga haita swa chifumiti that it could be true tichisoboka but god's story was about to become her right ruli kumpi okufukulugero why rachi she had given her resources yari awa day bintu she had given her resources yari awa day bintu bye look at luke chapter 5 laba luke tano verse 1 to 11 this is a scripture which my pastor shared on last sunday he talked about how jesus asked for the boat he found boats there my goodness when i think about this story <laughs> he found boats there and they were empty and he just asked the man there he said can i use your boat <laughs> And Peter said it's fine. Peter <laughs> namugamba twali busi. He said okay you move it out a little bit. Namugamba lisembeze goku vaku kwa bazenya. But who are you? Now yali what do you want? But what do you want? Chicho yagala. Why do you want to sit in my Rachel boat? Rachel go to sit in the other boat. Yano tule muliri. I mean there would be so many things he could have said. Wali bado into yali abadabusa. But he said it's okay. Ne yagamba twali busi. He let him. Namukiriza. After he had finished teaching. Yali amaliza okusomesa. Now he turned to him. Namuchukira. He said aha. Namugamba you've been fishing. Obadde ovuba. Okay. Kale. Now let's go out. <laughs> and we are going to fish. <laughs> Properly. God's story <laughs> was about to become Peter. <laughs> this is what was happening. <laughs> and that day they caught too much fish. <laughs> the boats were overwhelmed. <laughs> they had to call their friends <laughs> their friends with boats. <laughs> God wants to make his story your story. Will you give his resource, your resources to? Oh no why Will you give your resources? Oh no why You know you may even think that that was all they caught fish. But think about Peter's name. Peter's life. To this day. We are still talking about Peter. It is a result of a simple giving. of his resources to. He gave his boat. Yeah, why he told you? And the Bible says from that day. Bible Jesus said to him, "Come and follow me." Yes, you mugamba cha wongo. And now I'm going to teach you how to fish men. Era katikina kuigiriza okuvuba abantu. And we are all part of the church of Jesus Christ. Era fina tu kitundu ku kanisa ya Yesu. We are part of God's story. Tuli kitundu ku rugero ra mukama. But Peter, ne Peter was used of God. Ya kwesiba mukama to bring that story into reality. Okuleto rugero ro kufuka dala rach he gave his resources yeah why he into he gave his boat yeah why he atoli to this day yeah. to salero he's part of god's story chitundu kulugero ra mukama praise the lord mukama yebaswe matthew 26 verse 6 mataya abiri mukaga mukaga to 13 okutusa ku 13 matthew 26 verse 6 matayo abiri mukaga mukaga to 13 okutusa ku 13 this is the story of the woman who came and broke an alabaster jar lugero ro mchalo yeje namenya akasumbike and poured perfume on jesus nafuka akalosa kubigere bya yesu and the disciples began saying why have you wasted abaikirizo nabo gamba racho yononye why have you wasted racho yononye all that money in simbye zona jesus said yes you gamba leave this woman alone moleko mchalo ono she has anointed my body for burial i've suffered kumire gwangu ro kuzikwa God's story <laughs> is becoming her story. <laughs> But listen to what he said. He, he said wherever this gospel will be preached. <laughs> this woman now. <laughs> she has become a part of my story. <laughs> wherever it will be preached. <laughs> they will talk about her. <laughs> they will talk about her. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> Stop holding on to those meager resources you have. <laughs> Stop holding on to that man. Stop holding on to those cars. Those houses. In the book of Acts. People sold land. They sold houses. They brought the money. They put it at the apostles feet. So that other people would be blessed. But the Bible says no one had need in the church. Those people became part of God. But some of us we are holding on to the little. Holding on to those little. <laughs> Praise God. Mukama <laughs> yebaswe. Let us stop. Tulekere. <laughs> Give your resources to God. Why even to be eri mukama? And he will write your story. Era chikuandi korugiru. Act chapter 9. Bikro ya tume mwe. Verse 36. Asatu mukaka. Interest all these are stories. Zinongero zo. Of people gave their resources. Eri abantu wa. The lady called Tabitha. Wali wo mukira eti watabisa. She gave her resources. Ya why even to be to bless people. Okuwa mukisa. Then a day came. Erona kuracha. And she died. Ni wa yafa. She died actually. Yafa. When she died, 
Peter came to that town. Peter they called him. They put him aside. They said, Peter, you don't know what Tabitha has been doing for us. Tabitha has been blessing us. They brought Tabitha's clothes. Tabitha's, I don't know what which she had given them. Tabitha, Tabitha, Tabitha. She has done this and that and that. What happened? Peter went to God and he prayed. And he asked that Tabitha's life be restored. And this woman was raised to life. God's story came into man's story. Into Tabitha's life. Why? She gave her her resources. Praise God. In the year 2021, I want us to pay attention. If, if we will do these things, these things we've talked about, number one, pray and seek the face of God. Number two, surrender. Number three, number three, give your resources to God. And number four, walk in obedience. The obedience of faith. Your 2021. I don't, I don't, even, even, care. Care. I don't even care whether another COVID comes. By the way, even a worse one can come if it comes. But I can tell you something. Your story will have the finger of God. Your story will be different. People will have a different story. The world around may have a totally different hey, life and story. Your story will be a totally different story. Praise God. We need to come to a close now. Let us pray. Father, thank you for showing us how how your story, how your will, your good will can become a part of our lives. How we can walk in it. How we can live it. How we can have our life telling the story of your greatness. Of your power. Of your wisdom. Of your might. Help my brothers and sisters. Help me Lord. That we will align ourselves with these principles of your word. So that your story may be written through our lives. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen.